Okay, so we're going to get started. I want to welcome everyone. I got everything. If I ask anything, I'll ask you. Okay. To our second uh, in a series called Crafts in Your Kitchen. Uh, tonight we're featuring authentic Spanish cuisine, and we're really excited to have these two special guests, and I'll introduce them in, in just a minute. But I wanted to give um, um, a couple of shout outs before we get started. Um, our first Crafts in the Kitchen happened back in June, and we featured craft beers from two of our local St. Louis breweries. And so uh, there is another Brian Owens, um, so alumnus, who is joining us tonight. Mm -hmm. And that Brian Owens well, is the brewmaster at O'Fallon Brewery. And he was part of our panel that. back in June. So we say hi to you, Brian, and thanks for joining us. We had such a great response to the beer tasting and the discussion that evening that um, we uh, have invited the two panelists tonight and we think we'll keep, uh, keep on with this series. I also wanted to give a shout out our new chancellor, Dr. Kristen Soblick, her husband, Dr. Scott Peterson, faculty member in the English department are both uh, cooking along um, tonight from their kitchen. So uh, thanks Chancellor uh, for joining us. We're excited to have I need you. To write. I need the other and call. then uh, a last shout out I wanted I to give to is, you know, during uh, pandemic times, uh, before this, we would be out traveling, meeting alums. Um, I'm not sure that we would get a chance to do something like cook paella in uh, Edmund Sanchez's backyard. And so, uh, <laughs> We are excited that we're able to do something like this, and we're excited that we have alumni joining us tonight from all over the U.S. And I, and, uh, I saw one name on the list. I want to give a shout out to my friend and uh, alumna, Tiffany Sanders, who is in Chicago. So I invite all of you in the chat, if you're, if you're uh, joining us from another city, let us know where you're, where you're calling in from tonight. Um, we have a few housekeeping slides that we need to go through. If you're having any sort of technical difficulties, we have someone on standby, just please email them at executiveevents at umsl.edu and they'll get right back to you. We are recording this event and we will be sending the recording and the full recipe to all the attendees tonight uh, with a follow-up email and we'll post it to the UMSL alumni website as well. We want you to use the chat feature on Zoom. That's at the bottom of your screen. I already see great uh, chat happening. The chat will be monitored by the events team that's kind of behind the scenes producing tonight. And we just want to have agreements for this event that we support each other. We respect every person here. We keep it positive and on topic. No trolling or cyber bullying, please. And, and we'll put this up at the end, we want you to take some pictures tonight of your journey um, making paella and tag us on social media. We'd love to see uh, what your creation ends up looking like and uh, we'd love to see you um, on the UMSL Facebook and Instagram accounts. So without further ado, let me introduce our special guests tonight. First up, we have Dr. Edmund Sanchez. When Ed is not serving as the Dean of the Pierre Laclede Honors College uh, and, teaching, and teaching as a professor in UMSL's Department of Philosophy, you can find him enjoying his favorite pastime, cooking. So cooking is a form of entertainment for Ed's family. Paella has always proved to be a showstopper. Ed, we expect no less tonight. Uh, Ed was born in Spain and his parents and his sister still reside there. So we'll look forward to talking a little bit about that, Ed, as we uh, cook along with you. And then, uh, of course, Brian Owens. Um, music and love define the artistry of this singer, songwriter, dedicated community activist, and UMSL alumnus, Brian Owens. He's known for his soulful gift of song, He's also the founder and executive director of Life Arts, which is leadership, innovation, faith, and entrepreneurship. It's a nonprofit that provides artistic resources and opportunities to help students in underserved communities in the St. Louis area. 
Brain also serves as the community music artist in residence with the E. Desmond Lee Arts Collaborative at the University of Missouri, St. Louis. And as we talked yesterday, Brian and his family uh, are UMSL through and through, and you'll hear more about that. So uh, without further ado, Ed, Brian, let's get to cooking. My man. All right. Ed. How are you doing, Brian? We're making paella, Ed. All right. Uh, so let's, I got some stuff to show you real quick. Okay. Let me unhook my phone. I have it on a tripod here, pretending like I know what I'm doing. Uh, I'm going to flip this around. Cool. And maybe not. There you go. Yeah, it's being stubborn. There we go. I'll do it this way. Ah, there cool. we go. Yeah, I'll do this. So we got, that's a paella pan if you guys haven't seen it. And I will show you. Well, more. Uh, we've got a bunch of ingredients that I'll show you, but what I want to show you is the rice and uh, and uh, and then what I really want to show you is if you really want to make paella, this is what you need right there. Uh, this is Penelope Casas book and it's basically what I use to crib everything from. It's a great book uh, and it's really fun to use. So should we go? Should we start cooking? I'm, start, let's let's start. rock and roll, man. Let's, All right. Let's go. All right. Let me get this down so people can see the fire. Oh, nice. That's, okay, so you you obviously you have a charcoal fire, and I am yep. cheating tonight, and I have uh, the gas going. So. All right. Perfect. Yeah. All right. So. Let's get the pan on there. And. Hit it with some olive oil, and the first thing you'll learn about Spanish cooking is. We're very generous with olive oil. I like generous. I like generous. Oh, Ed, yeah, you're really generous. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It's shockingly generous. Uh, a friend of mine, when I, she first cooked with me, what did she? What's the word she used? She described it. She said, add olive oil. More olive oil than you would think. Yeah. More, now, she Ed, said, I, I, Ed. I, I, yep. Let me ask you a question, Ed. So I'm yep. doing my paella pan, right? And and mm -hmm. this paella pan is doing this where all of my oil is going to one side so i'm i'm wondering if i want to go with my cast iron you might you uh what you might want to do i mean can you raise the it's probably it's just an un, uneven pan which yeah. won't matter a I'm lot once you get the rice in there right let's see yeah. if i turn you see mine is kind of sliding good. down a little bit too now okay. if, you, if you don't have a paella pan ed can you use cast iron? Cast iron. That's cast iron. Give me a cast iron. iron. All right, yeah. I have my beautiful yeah. assistant Ella Bell going to get me a cast iron skillet. So, all right, um, we're just gonna we're gonna dump that oil into the cast iron. I'm a fan of cast iron. Um, my mother cooked with cast iron. My grandmother cooked with cast iron. So we're gonna we're gonna go cast iron. So we'll have it. We'll have both traditions going tonight. All right. Well, you get that going. I'm gonna slide this up a little bit so the oil doesn't okay. eat. And that, let's see. So one thing about paella, it's one of the things I was telling Brian earlier. Let me make my camera work. Mm -hmm. Is that everybody thinks of paella as a dish, but it really isn't. It's just a way of cooking rice. Gotcha. So one of the things Brian and I were talking about were different way, things we could do with it. And Brian came up with a sort of Thai paella idea that uh, I'm definitely going to try. And a cur remember we were talking about curries and paella and how we could. Oh yeah. That. Oh yeah. So, but it's really just a way of cooking rice. It's, and the traditional paella people, I mean, my mom told me, I'm not sure, this is the you know, family lore, but traditional paella isn't, isn't really even seafood at all. It's rabbit and green beans. That's the, the most traditional paella from the mountains in Valencia. But you know, this is what you hear in your family, not necessarily a food anthropologist speaking, so. Okay. Makes sense though. It's what people can get off the land. Yeah, that's you know, exactly it. A lot it of the same thing. Like a lot of great food, this begins in you know, in with people who don't have a lot of money and got to use what they have. Yeah, yeah. And then when you level up, you know, you start adding stuff like shrimp. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah. In Spain, the the rumor is when the English tourists came, then we started adding shrimp and and, uh, and shellfish. Absolutely. All right, you got your cast iron. 
Oh yeah, I got my I have let me switch, switch my camera so you can see I got my cast iron going. So we're beautiful. All right. So what do you want to throw in this bad boy? Let me here, let me see what if I get where I got this thing aimed. All right, can you see my paella pan too? Uh-huh. All right. All right, so just throw the onions in there to start. Okay, can you grab the onions? So I got Ella's, you know, Ella's grabbing a good the onions. Bit of onions. Oh yeah, a lot of onions. Let me see. And then we're gonna let right. those. Give me a we're gonna let yes. those caramelize just a little. You need like smell a vision or something where you could, you could smell it while you're cooking it. You it's really it good right away. Yeah. Now mine is gonna. It's still. It's still heating up a bit. So. But it'll be fine once it once we get it going. Okay. There we go. It's starting to sizzle. I'm starting to hear the sizzle. Yeah. Oh yeah. And then with a charcoal file fire, I'll have to play with it. So what I, I've got some, I got some applewood chips here that I can toss in when I need them. I'll brag about it. <laughs> yeah, I think I want this fire just a little bit hotter yet. That's working pretty well. And once you've got them just a little bit, you can go ahead and throw in your sausage. Okay. What I've got is some Spanish chorizo sausage. And I, think I suck a little andouille in there too. Okay. I keep giving you a shot of my pillows. So how's that? And there's not, you know, there's, it's pretty simple. You just let them, let it cook. So, Ed, you were saying that there are like vegetarian substitutions that it's for really everything. Cooking, so, people. So, if you want to do this vegetarian, uh, the, the it's there's a lot of options. My favorite is uh, my brother makes a, a favada. What are favada? Uh, fava beans, fava beans uh, artichoke, and uh, artichoke paella that's really amazing. But you can do a lot of different things with it. He also makes a black bean paella. He sort of took black beans and rice and turned it into a, a paella dish. That sounds good. So, but really the only thing you need for is just a broth, which can be vegetarian that has saffron in it, rice that will absorb the broth. That's why that Spanish rice helps. And then whatever else you want to put in it. And a sofrito, you know, you make something like this to help flavor, then you, you'll you see you just throw the rice in and, all right, I'm gonna throw in now my peppers and my garlic. Peppers and garlic, dear. Look at that. So I got some, you know, just some throw peppers in there, and garlic. Baby. And then, there you go. Again, we just let that cook. Can you scrape all of the garlic? We gotta get all the garlic out of that, dear. We want all that garlic in there. Come on. There we go. There we go. Come on. <laughs> all right. So Come tell on. me. So who's helping you, Brian? This is Ella. She's our second born. The big sister. She said, yup. Um, <laughs> now, Ed, you have someone helping you too. I don't think you introduced her. I have <laughs> Sue. I, I was going to wait till I moved my camera. Okay. Okay. And I have Sue right, helping me, and my daughter was going to help too, but she, her algebra homework isn't done yet. So I, oh, wow. she's, going, she's stuck. All right. Oh, yeah. So yeah, paella, it's really whatever you want to do. You need this step, but you can do this step completely vegetarian. And then... The next step, let's uh, let this go a little longer. Go, go in and get the jar that I put the, for, the, for the drink. Hold on, I'm gonna mess with my camera here. Ooh, that looks great. Oh, oh yeah, it's starting wonderful. to cook. It's starting to cook. It's starting to cook. Yeah. Woo! That's pretty good, Brian. That's, oh, that looks great. I love that oh. pan. Oh, there's Sue. 
from yep, my mama. There's, there's my wife, Sue. Hello, Sue. Can you can they can hear you? You just I don't can't have hear them. Oh, she say. can't hear you guys. Oh, I'm nice, nice. She can't hear you. They said hello. Hello. I'm just waiting to eat. I have nothing to say. I'm just waiting. <laughs> I, 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 I want to do your joke, Ed. You've got to introduce her as. Oh yes, yeah, she's my sous chef. Uh, <laughs> I didn't think it, that joke was, wasn't that good the first joke. time, but she's, making a joke. she's my sous chef. Uh, that's really, uh, and she's been my sous chef for a long time. So, how long? How long, Ed? How long? We have been how long we've we been married. This is embarrassing. 30, 30 what? Ninety eight. Thirty two. Thirty. We've been married thirty two years. Oh goodness. Yeah, yeah. yeah we. Yeah. I got a long. I got a long way to go. We have people in the chat saying hello to her. <laughs> People are saying hello to you. Wait. Congratulations, Ed and Sue. Well, thank you. After you hit 30, you, I already showed that. After you hit 30, you just wait for 40. Yeah. Let's All right. So. <laughs> uh, all right. So now the, the next step is the rice. The rice is, this is the sort of rice. tricky part. See how short grained it is? Mm hmm. And that's what makes the difference. This rice is grown really only around Valencia and, and uh, Valencia, I'll pronounce it, Valencia and Murcia in Spain. You know, this, I'm Spanish, so we go th to everything. And it, it's super, super absorbent. And the first thing is you toss it in and you toast it. So let the olive oil coat it and let it toast a little bit. And I have no idea why we do this. I am suspicious that this is one of those traditions that doesn't really. Well, there's a real reason. There's a reason. Yeah. Sue, Sue says there's a reason. She's also a, a scientist. Like, so what? I was reading about the chemistry of this. She was reading about the chemistry of this, and she says there's a reason. Can you hold the camera? Do you know what that reason is? Oh, that's great. The and then what I do is I add a little bit of tomato just to okay. start adding a little liquid to it. So we're gonna add, so we're gonna to... grab the tomatoes. Mm -hmm. You grab the tomatoes. And you can see one what of the nice things about it. It's just, it starts looking pretty almost right away. Well, yeah, the red, and the it, red and color. Yeah. And then the nice thing is the smell. It's hard to, uh, it is a shame that people, I hope people who are cooking get this uh, and, because the smell is always really amazing. Do we have a smell emoji? Can we put a smell yeah, emoji up? That would be great. No, we have a giant, uh, we have a giant fire pit uh, in the outside the, the honors college. Uh, and I have said that it's big enough for a very large paella pan. Do me a favor, open up to the big giant paella pan picture. And uh, I'm hoping that I can do a giant paella. So I want to show you guys something. I don't know if, if you can see that. Oh, goodness gracious, yes. Yeah, that is a huge That's what, yes. I, yeah, you see that gentleman by oh, this. Wow. They'll do that on the beach. They'll do a paella of that size on the beach. How do you even do that? I like, see do, you like a, do you back up like, a truckload of rice? Like how do you? Yeah, do it's like five guys, and like they the, they dump the rice out of out of uh, big like sandbags. <laughs> so, so Ed, somebody uh, asked um, earlier about where do you, where do you get your rice here in St. Louis? Where's the best place to find the saffron and the rice? I, the rice you can find at World Market. You know, when it isn't COVID, it's really easy to find at World Market. Well, this, this is, it can be harder this uh, right now. They let me down. Uh, they, we the internet. Yeah, we had to use the internet. World Market let us down. Um, can you use all right, different but, kinds of rice at all? That's also you a question. You can really use any rice you want. Uh -huh. the, this rice is great because it's extra absorbent. Okay. But, you know, all rice absorbs liquid. So it's really a question of, you know, sort of knowing how much liquid you want to use for the kind of, of rice you want. I made it with basmati rice. It was a little odd, but it still tasted good. <laughs> Here's the key moment. We got, we're going to add the broth now. You sh uh, I've got about a little bit over six cups for this. And you just pour it in. 
And this broth, the one I've made, is a little bit of brandy, chicken stock, saffron, bay leaves, salt. And I think that was it on this one. So, and then you just make sure that the rice is kind of evenly distributed. And you if you don't have a if you don't have a level fire like I don't, the reason that one of the, the handles are for is as it cooks, you just spin it. So the part that isn't the, the liquid shifts around for you. And that's if you don't have a level fire, you can still uh, you know keep it cooking pretty evenly just by turning it as you need to. Okay. So I'm looking through the chat, Ed, and I gotta tell you, we have people here, alumni here from California, Oakland, California to, where's my Florida person? I saw you. So, I mean, we have people from the West Coast to the East Coast, Sarasota, Florida. Well, okay. I, for Flir Floridians particularly, one of my favorite paellas, uh, uh, paellas, it, you know, comes from Spain, but it's all over Latin America, all over the Spanish speaking world. And there's a Cuban paellas that are among my very favorite. There was a place in Atlanta called La Fonda, Latina. La Fonda Latina, which is a Cuban restaurant. And there's several places in Miami that make unbelievably good paella. And there, it's a little bit different. Uh, and I don't know exactly how, because I've never tried to make it. But I, I would recommend if you have a good Cuban restaurant you like and you, they make paella, definitely give it a go. What does so that mean? We got one more question about the cooking itself. Um, should mm -hmm. the fire on um, a gas stove be high or low after adding the liquid? You want a pretty, uh, a moderate boil. So I, you know, medium high, um, I, this is what I would recommend. Uh, it, it's sort of, honestly, I can tell by the way it's bubbling. So. <laughs> If you look at this, that's about right. I don't yeah, know if you guys can see. Oh, hey, Ed, did you already add the broth? Yeah, I just added, I think you were, you were out when you added the broth. Yeah, so, so do I need to bring the broth back up to five cups? How much did you, how much rice did you have? Um, two, two and, two and, two and a third, two and two thirds? Yeah, I would do five cups. Okay, so can you bring that up to five, baby? Just add that. I'm like, why does mine not look like yours? It's because I don't have the broth. It's okay. <laughs> but yeah, I think you're like with the heat. I think. Uh, let me see if 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 I should turn my heat down. Well, the That's tricky thing is when you're doing it on a fire like me. It's you. You know, you're kind of at the heat's mercy. It can cook at lots of different at lots of different rates as long as the rice cooks through and absorbs the liquid and you don't burn the bottom. And the trick to all this, it's, you can make a lot of okay paellas, but making a great paella is hard because you got to get that toasty brown rice at the bottom without burning it. <laughs> oh, yeah, baby. So there you go, Ella, just pour it all in there. <laughs> it was gonna go on anyway. You can't. She's like, it was gonna go on anyway. That's you can pour it some at a time. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and add my chicken in like too, because I didn't cook it all that much. So, okay, so, so Ed, we just have another question about the broth, and I think yep. it's timely mm -hmm. that Grab a cup. Brian uh, had a little spill over. So you said it's okay. Six, you said six cups of broth. The broth. Yep said five does it it mm -hmm. just really depends on how much rice you use right it depends on how much rice and what kind of rice okay. um so you can i've seen like the rice i'm using it uh, actually calls for three and a half cups per cup of rice which my response was yeah there's no way that's right um i usually use two to one or one and a half to one you can always add liquid, but you know, you can't. So if it looks like it's just, if it's cooking and you're a, 
and you feel like you're running out of liquid, but the rice isn't cooked yet, you can add liquid. You can even add water. Uh, uh, it's a little tricky because when you first start cooking, you can also panic and think it's going to burn when it really isn't. But it's easier. I mean, you, you obviously you can't take liquid away, so you can always add a little liquid if it Who's, looks like. Who it says you like can't that. take liquid away? <laughs> who says you cannot take liquid away? I just, I, just took liquid, this, I just took liquid away. So my question is, should I take more liquid away? Uh, so the, I think so you'll end up now, having to pour it back in. Okay. So I'll Ed, just let this, I'll let this do what it does, man. Yeah. Ed, um, you said that you were going to add your chicken because you, you didn't, it needs to be pre-cooked, but not fully pre-cooked. Right. And so I you, just kind of flash cooked it. So I'm going to add it. I'm gonna add it now to make sure it cooks through. Okay. Uh, and you know, basically this has got about another 15 to 20 minutes at a pretty reasonable boil. Okay. So, you know, depending yeah. on how you cook your chicken, and this is, uh, the other thing is this is really, you can put chicken in here for a little bit because there's so much liquid, it doesn't get all that dry. Okay. Uh, can so people what see? About the, I, I, what about the um, the sausage that you put in earlier? You did not pre-cook that. No, I did that. I sauteed that right here with the other vegetables. Okay, and then we haven't done the shrimp yet, but the no, shrimp and is I'll gonna, put the shrimp is going to cook in the paella, isn't it? Right. I'll put the shrimp in the paella to cook. And again, that depends. I like my shrimp, you know, not very cooked. I don't like overcooked shrimp. And my family will complain that I'm feeding them raw shrimp, but that's, I don't think I am. But it's uh, again, up to you how you like the shrimp, how early or late you put it in. Okay. And that's really, I mean, I'm gonna get my heat up. How's it looking, Brian? It's looking good. I'm gonna get my heat up a little bit, which okay. I know you're not supposed to cover, but I'm gonna treat this right now like I'm cooking it in the oven for a minute. Mm -hmm. and let just let my heat get a little bit hotter um yeah but it's i mean nothing's exploded outside of the the spilling of the broth into the grill yeah i'm gonna she add said, a little not my fault That's fine. <laughs> <laughs> i'm gonna add a little bit of no i think i'm still okay i'm checking my fire oh i got enough heat you want to add what are you looking add some coals maybe or yeah, I was trying to think about, you know, whether I need to, you know, the tricky part we're doing with coals is I got to have them, you know, they got, they take a little while of light. So I want to make sure I have enough heat till the end. So. Yeah, I think, questions. I mean, yeah, we, any questions? We, yeah, are we supposed to be, um, keep stirring it or did we just, do we just let it simmer and cook now? From now you just let it cook. Um, you're going to, and you're going to let it cook till all the liquid basically is gone. And the, the tricky part is you could let it cook till all the liquid is gone, but th the bottom isn't burnt. So you have actually a very, very tight frame for taking it off and you've got to take it off a little early because it will continue cooking afterwards. So when we take it off, we'll cover it with aluminum foil for about five minutes. Uh, or you just cover it with whatever you have. If you have another paella pan, just put it on top of this one, but, but we'll cover it and it'll still cook. And so what happens ex to everyone, in including me, who doesn't do this all the time, sometimes your paella will be, have too much liquid and it'll be a little runny. And sometimes the bottom will burn and you'll have black rice on the bottom. Neither of them are, are terrible because a runny paella is still delicious. And if you burn the bottom, you just don't eat that part, scrape the top part off and eat that. It's still really good. So, but the perfect thing is if you get this very light brown, it looks like almost toast on rice. That's the goal. Okay, so if, there, if people are at home cooking on their stove, does it need to be covered right now? Yeah. No, it should never be covered. Never be covered. Nope, the, you, need that, you need that rice to, you need all that liquid to evaporate. So, Wait, so are you ready for this, Ed? Hold on, are you ready for this? Oh, are you yeah. ready for this? Are you ready for this? Let's Hold go. On. Hold on. Hold on. You ready for this? Nice. Oh, yeah. Lovely. All right. 
I'm going to go with my shrimp now. Oh, really? Well, I'm, it, yeah, I'm guessing. Okay. But shrimp, I'm, my dude. Now, do you peel your shrimp or do you leave, do you I leave the, 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 I peel these. I like, I like to leave them whole, but again, I've got family members, particularly my daughter who objects. And who, you I know, doesn't that, like to, doesn't like to but, peel shrimp. Yeah, I found that when I leave, when I peel the shrimp, they have a tendency to shrink in the heat. Mm-hmm. Um, and when I leave them on, they tend to keep their size. So we're going to yeah. go with that. So, so how are you putting them in? Are you just spreading them out around? Or? I'm just spreading them out. I'll show you. I'm just spreading them out and then burying them. So I, the only thing I'm doing is sort of making sure that they, they're covered as much as possible. And you can see one of the reasons I'm doing it is I, mine is cooking pretty fast. Got you. But I'm definitely going to have to add some liquid to this. And I've got some more stock. So I'm, I'm just going to bury these shrimp and probably add another half a cup of liquid because this is cooking a little bit. You know, with a charcoal fire, you, you have less control about how fast things cook. And yeah. this is going a little bit faster than, than I thought it would. And I would just say to people cooking with a cast iron skillet that may not be 12 inch, mine is like. Cool. How big is yours? Oh, we're losing Brian again. Ah. He'll be, he'll be back. So, I mean, the thing about paella too is that you can do a really fancy one, but this is sort of a medium fancy one. You can do a really fancy one, but you can take a cast iron skillet, throw some onions and, you know, and wh whatever you want in there to make a sofrito, throw, you know, take some chicken stock, throw some saffron in it, add your rice, put it, and you're done. You've got, you know, chicken and rice or, you know, rice and, and beans or whatever you want. You can just throw whatever ingredient you want in here. And once you're good at it, they can be my my mom made these in like 45 minutes she would make these for for you know when she didn't know what else to do she'd throw a paella together so if you're using frozen shrimp and you thaw it out in advance it's pre-cooked you just kind of throw it in at the end to warm it is that right yeah yep if they're you're that's using what anything that's pre-cooked you just want to throw it in at the end to warm okay I would, the only thing I would say about using frozen shrimp is you get some extra flavor if it's cooking in the, and that's why you leave the, the shells on. The shells are great. So Brian is going to have a great flavor from those shrimp sh shells in his paella. Here, I'm going to take this off the tripod real quick so I can actually show people stuff. All right, there we go. Can you do um, so? Can you do landscape? Can you hold it landscape so we can see a little bit more? Oh, Ed? sorry. Yeah. There you go. Thanks. There you go. Now let me see if I can. So oh, wow. you can kind of see how it's boiling now, and if you look at mine, you can see that like one side is more watery than the other, and uh, I added just added about a half a cup of liquid. I, my neighbor's dog's here. Nice. He, he he smelled the paella. <laughs> yeah, I think so. So Ryan, it's looking great. Yeah, it really is. So what should I do? So Ed, I'm 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 one of the culprits that had the you know the shrimp that wasn't necessarily raw as pre cooked. I just went ahead and threw it in uh, with the mm -hmm. shell on. Should I just let it sit on this? I know you buried yours down. Um, I would I let it sit on top. Let, just let's get on top. Okay, that's what I'm gonna do. Yeah, because it's gonna cook fine that way. So, and then now we just sit, I mean, now we just sit around and wait. That's it. That's it. It's a, it's a super easy dish. You know, this would be, you know, you can make a salad right now. The only thing about it is that if you, I'm, you know, I'm superstitious that if you leave it, it burns. So I like to sit around and wait with it. <laughs> Over to it. Um, now, but, what kind of drink would you be having while you're waiting for it, Ed? 
Do you have I a would have sangria. Wine or? Well, I would have sangria. This is no. a really a, a summer recipe. Okay. Um, so you you know, and in the best of all possible worlds, you're having this on the beach. I need you to. Uh, and the places they're called, they're, the places that serve them have a, a weird name. They're called chiringuitos. So you go to a chiringuito, which is a word I've never heard even in other, uh, other Spanish-speaking countries. It's a, a Spanish word, and it just means a little beach restaurant. Uh, and usually people are in their swimming suits and that, and, you know, it's, you, you know, uh, the, the fa you know, you've got tables for 12 and tables for 16. It's big groups. And they go, uh, they, uh, everybody gets together and we have paella. And yeah, that, that's, I just saw someone put a note there, O'Fallon Brewery, but I would, I would recommend the Pierre Laclede Pilsner uh, <laughs> that they brewed last year for the, for our 30th oh anniversary God. celebration that we will be having at some point. There, there's a great plug. That's a great plug. Yeah. That was from the other uh, Brian Owens from um, O'Fallon Brewery. Uh, who did our first craft in the kitchen? So, and I was so I like that. Okay, there's there's a burning question about peas. peas. Oh, oh no, this is a huge question. family fight. My brother despises peas. My mom, my mom would always put peas, and many pies have peas. They really go well with it. But my brother will not have anything to do with peas. So really whatever you can agree on as a family can go into the paella. Well, so I've, I think I, I've told Brian this, but every Thanksgiving, we actually, um, for years and years, my brother had a farm up in Maine. He's finally sold it last year. He's moving to Oman to teach school. It's another crazy story, but, <sighs> but uh, uh, and he's actually not there right now. He's in Florida teaching from midnight to eight in the morning because he's teaching online. Uh, but uh, for years, we all went to his house for Thanksgiving in Maine. And by all of us, what happened here? There we go. By all of us, I mean, like, you know, my family from Spain. We have family in Korea that would come. We have family in Guatemala and in Colombia. Uh, you know, so we would all, you know, as many people as could get together. And on Sunday, on that uh, Thursday, we'd have Thanksgiving. And then we would take the turkey carcass and make a giant stock. And that was our Saturday paella stock. And we would have a giant paella contest uh, where all of us would make different kinds of paellas and, and, you know, and then all claim ours was the best. <laughs> I love it. Okay, Brian, how are you doing over there? Let's see. We're good. Okay. So, Brian. So, I couldn't make, I couldn't make a, san, a sangria. So, we're going to do, we're going to do like a on the fly drink. So Brian, what's the what stuff you eat? I mean, what are the like the the favorite uh, foods at your house? Um. Okay. What are the favorite foods at our house? Are you gonna ask the people that? Hold on. What are the favorite foods at our house? There you go. What do you say? Well, we can't have chicken. He said chicken, but we can't have chicken. We're we're pretty much a vegetarian household. Um. Do you like mac and cheese. Mac and cheese. Do you like chicken? Curry. Curry's a uh, big one here. Last curry. Cur curry's a big one here. So oh, we love, love curry. Love, love curries. Tacos. So it's uh, tacos. Yeah, tacos is a, is a, is a nice. taco Tuesday. We're that family that has, you know, like, you know, meatless Monday and taco Tuesday and waffle Wednesday. Daddy, every day. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Every day is meatless. And I guess it would be in a vegetarian household. Um, but yeah, so that's, you know, we... You know, my wife's a really good cook, and she's really good at, you know, cooking and making healthy stuff. Who's also an alum, Man Owens, class four six. Um, yeah, somebody said Thanksgiving Thursday. It, exactly, <laughs> exactly. That's how we that's And how someone we said, hold on, someone asked when you add peas. If they're frozen peas, I would put them in right towards the end. You just want just enough time for them to thaw and warm. Uh, if they're fresh peas, uh, I don't know. Ooh, a pinch of Tabasco. Yeah, so I didn't do this because my wife complained. But if you use if you use a, a more than a pinch of Chipotle, that gives it a really nice extra smokiness and heat. So, oh. so the chancellor is having a little bit of an emergency. She does not have paprika. 
So what spices oh. can be used instead? That was the uh, oh, chipotle question. Oh, chipotle. If she has any chipotle, that's the, uh, I mean, don't get carried away wow. unless you like heat, but that's, that's got the nice smokiness. Okay. Okay, that's a question I didn't, we got a chicken question. All right. So, so some people did not pre-cook the chicken. And so some people are cooking chicken right now, or they might be a little bit behind. That's, uh, that's all right. That's the beauty that we're okay. recording this. We get to try yeah, again. I mean, this is, you can kind of see that there's a lot of quiet time. Right? So you can see how much the, uh, um, you can see how much the rice is now, you know, absorbed a lot of the liquid and you get, you know, it's yellow. It's got the yellow and the red and the kind of basic look of a paella now. And now, it, you know, you start using your nose to make sure it doesn't burn. But you're still not stirring nice. it. You're not nope. anything in it. You're just letting it cook. So if you stir it, that bottom layer moves, and then it just won't toast. Okay. So, <laughs> yeah, I just realized there's only three of us in the house, and this is a big paella. So... Hey, we're all coming over afterwards, those of us in I, That's what I was going to say. I mean, yeah. you know, we can, we can sit in the yard socially distance and eat a paella from paper plates. Yeah, great. Just, just type your address in the chat and we'll be all, we'll all be over about 830. Uh, <laughs> you can, I think you can, free, I mean, you can buy frozen paella in Spain all the time. It's, uh, so I'm guessing that you can freeze it just fine. Kristen asked if you can freeze it. Mm -hmm. uh, I've never, I mean, I've never frozen it mostly because uh, I, you know, usually uh, until recently, my son made sure that it didn't last. Uh, so this is paella that would, you know, feed six or eight people or the four of us if my son's home. Brian, Brian I, I have to ask Brian about his latest CD, his latest project. I, that, you beat me to it. I was going to say, Love Came Down. Aww. Tell us about it. It's a great album. Where can we get it? <laughs> Where can we How get you it? Can, you, can get on, you can get it on iTunes. You can get it on, you know, any place that you can stream. It's going to come out on vinyl this fall. Oh, that's great. So, on vinyl? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. On vinyl. That's nice. You can, get, you can get my last three. Yeah, you can get my last three records on vinyl. I'm old school. I love that. I'm, I'm vinyl, vinyl and cast iron skillets all day long. <laughs> I told Brian long. when when we first met, I started listening to his music and I got completely hooked on his Johnny Cash. I was gonna covers. say that's one of my favorites. I mean, it's, I, I, mean, I, I said on a Johnny Cash hat right now, so you just can't see it because it's backwards. Yeah, I was actually. Yeah. All right. Are you let me getting put this compliments back up here. about your voice and your music in the chat? Oh, well, thank you. See, nobody's complimenting me on my cooking. I'm, <laughs> I'm, 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 I'm feeling, I'm in my feelings right now. I'm in my feelings right now. It's okay, though. It's okay. It's okay. You haven't, the paella's over there. It's chilling. It's doing its thing. Thank you, dear. Yep. My daughter, my daughter is, is giving me compliments. Wow, I, I got carried um, away with the lights here. All yeah. right. You look, you look good, Ed. No, I was, I the was. The really... looks great too. <laughs> so Ed, in honor of sangria, since we can't make sangria, mm -hmm. we're gonna make a very fruity lemon and orange blueberry. Oh, that's. Yeah, yeah. So. To go with the paella. Oh, yeah. yeah, the way I make a sangria for my kids is I do something like that and I just give it a little club soda. And then I call oh, it club soda. You know what? Go get some of the. Is that great stuff? No, not the that great stuff. Can I get a spoon? Hey, Ed. Uh, no. Hey, I, yeah. Ed. Yeah. I, yeah. Attendees are asking you to sing. That's not going to Oh, happen. that must be for Brian. <laughs> asking Brian to sing. I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Sing what? Chancellor, Chancellor is saying, 
singing, singing. <laughs> singing, singing. It's a declaration. Well, okay, so we were talking about what you were wearing before we went on, and Ed's got his, like, red and yellow, his Spanish colors, and his Honors College t-shirt on, and then you were like, well, I'm in all black. So if you're in all black, like, what about a little Johnny Cash? Love is a burning thing. It makes the fire ring. Bound by wild desire, I fell into a ring of fire. I fell into a burning ring of fire. I went down, 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 and the flames went higher, and it. She wouldn't sing. She wouldn't sing. It burns. It burns. You didn't say it was supposed to. It burns. Make sure that make sure that the paella isn't burning. You mean burn? <laughs> make sure the paella the, the paella isn't burning. How does it spell? That sounded great, Brian. Thank you. I if you hear if you hear if you hear lots of noise, it's just children. It kind of like you had me. So all these. So, uh, all these who um, left? Ask who left their their dad hanging? Which one of your children? Uh, Who left the dad hanging? Ella, right there. Yeah. Right there. Right there. It's okay. All right, let's see what we're working with here. Oh, yes. Oh, so wow. I'm going to add some more liquid. Let me see. So before you okay. do that, taste yeah. the rice and see how, take a little bit of rice off the top and see how cooked it is. Okay, doing that now. It's, it's a little chewy. All right, then, yeah, give it a little liquid. Okay. I just happen to have this liquid that I took out earlier. Because <laughs> I had the I had the forthrightness, the common senseness. Let's see what we're working with here. So I'm gonna pour some of this in here. All right. So I got my liquid going in. Now it's sticking to the bottom, but I don't know if it's burning. All right, so uh -huh. th that liquid should keep it from sticking too much. Okay. That if you add a little liquid, but again, this, this is the, you know, follow your nose. So if you the, if you smell any burning, pull it off. You know what though, the good the good thing about this cast iron skillet is that it's pretty forgiving. Yeah. Um, especially with it not being on direct. Um, I got the grate in between it, so it's giving me, it's giving me some pretty good, some pretty good stuff. Well, this is mine, and it's getting very close. You can see that you can still see some of the liquid. I don't know who can, if you guys can see that. Mm -hmm. There's some boiling, okay. but it's definitely right on the edge of done, which is good. That's the timing, <laughs> just about what I thought. That's the other so, thing is. Okay, I'm doing something that you never should do. Never do what I'm doing. I'm checking what, it. What, stir it? Oh. Stir, well, I'm kind of checking to see how stuck it is to the bottom, and it's getting really close. And of course, if I did that, my mother would immediately yell at me, and that's actually no joke. She would, she would be <laughs> like, what are you doing? Don't touch it. Okay. And you know, I, I cook. The way I cook is sort of that's in my mind is would would my mom yell at me, then I don't do it. I'm 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 getting some good vibes over here. Yeah. This smells really good. I just want to remind oh, yeah. everyone to take a pic of what you're doing at home and be sure to post that. Let's see how I'm doing on my drink over here. How does it taste? Should we add some blueberries? Let's see. Oh, that's good. Oh, wow. Is that good? It's like a different kind it's of It's really lemonade. good. It's like a different it's, yeah. Let's add, add, some, add some blueberries to that. Yeah. That looks... Yeah. And then we'll hit that with a little bit of, a little bit of something red. No. Just, to, just, to, just to give us that sangria kind of vibe. Go get a little bit of grape juice. Hey, Brian. What's up? Tell us a little bit about um, 
what you love about UMSL. I know that you're, I, I kind of introduced you and said that you're kind of UMSL through and through. Your wife is an alum and, and you work at UMSL. You, you teach there as part of the Desley Collaborative, but tell us a little bit about your experience at UMSL. Um, I, I just, I, one of the things I love is that they, they keep letting me come back. They haven't kicked me out, um, even though, I, I mean, I graduated a long time ago. So um, I'm, I'm getting to develop a lot of young people through UMSL. And I think that's, that's my biggest joy is to, to see the willingness to continue to allow alums to, to pour back into the current students. Um, and uh, yeah, I think that's, that's kind of my, probably my biggest thing. Um, building out culture, um, access to the community, you know, all those kinds of things. Really cool and great. Well, we're, we're really proud of you as a distinguished alum, so. There's the other alum. Love it. All of the kids, like, yeah. Ed, what about you? You're, you're in your what, second, third year at, at UMSL? Tell I'm, us what you love about UMSL and Honor Scout. I'm style. starting my third year. Um, it's the students. I mean, it's, you know, I get to teach people like Brian. And, you know, it really is. The students are, are amazing. They're, you know, they, they have, they all come from fascinating backgrounds. Uh, yeah. You know, they're, they have a lot of energy. They're excited. They're just, and it's, they're just really a fascinating and diverse group of students to teach and they keep you kind of young and, and engaged. I mean, it's the, honestly, the worst thing about COVID is, is not seeing the students. That is the, of all the things that, you know, that are, are difficult, it's just not getting to spend time with them, you know, except for on, on Zoom. So yeah, it's very much the students. That's, uh, and, and I, you know, and our, our mission, our, you know, it's really corny, but the We Transform Lives thing gets me. I know it, you know, I know I'm sure people think it's just a catchphrase or something, but it's absolutely, at least for me, it, it, it is what I want to do. So it is, it feels kind of corny even to say it, but the, that really, for me, is pretty meaningful. So there it is. Yeah. I'm kind of a romantic, I guess. As you should be, as you should be. We have people online saying they love their days at Honors College. Uh, Elaine Barbie says her nephew goes to UMSL. Um, All right, I'm gonna interrupt because I'm pulling my paella off. You're pulling it out? Yeah, I think it's, I'm getting a, I'm getting a burnt smell. So let me show you what it looks like. I could be early, but I'm getting a little bit of a burnt smell. So I'm gonna pull it and then cover it. So that's what it looks like. Hold on, let me make some space here. Oh, there you are, Chica. Oh, my daughter came out just in time to see my paella. All right, can... Oh. It looks beautiful. All right, put it here. All right, no, I, yeah, will you move the tripod for me? Will you point the camera in the right direction? Yeah, no, point at the paella. You can just take the camera off. But. Let's see what you got. So that's the paella. Now we're going to cover it to let it finish cooking. Now, you're doing, you're, you're taking yours off. Should I be taking mine off? You, um, ran, you ran just a little bit late because follow you your nose. Hands. So I don't want I don't want to I don't want to poke it I don't want to poke it like like you know I don't want to make your mom mad. So okay, it, if you don't smell a little bit of if you don't smell anything, leave it unless you see that all the liquid's gone. No, I still got hey, some, Anna, I still got some liquid in there. Uh, you're I good. I got then. some liquid in there, but let Could me see my rice. A bowl or something I can and a spoon so I can put some on a plate so people can see what I realize. So I think you, I think you got another couple minutes before you're ready to go. It's getting there. Some of, I tasted some of the rice and it's still a little, a little, uh, a little, a little yeah. too, too, but um, 
I'm so tempted to I'm so tempted to hit this with some curry right now. Curry powder is not even plenty. Well, I you know what you do if you put the curry do like a, the curry powder in the stock so that it is absorbs it. I mean, one of the things I was after we talked the other day. One of the things I'm going to do is I love uh, Tom Yum. You know the Thai soup. Yeah. I'm going to take that and I'm going to put it, make a Tom Yum stock, and then I'm going to use it to make a paella, and it's going to be like a Thai paella. That sounds so good. <laughs> I mean, like I said, it's a way of cooking. Once you know how to do this, particularly, you know, if the simple version on a cast iron, you can use it to make, I mean, you know, yeah, every culture in the world makes rice, so you can pretty much come up with whatever combination you can you can think of. I want you to I mean, show us before we go tonight. I want you to show us the book again. Okay. Hold on, let me. The book is called Paella: uh, Spectacular Rice Dishes from Spain. And it's by Penelope, Penelope Casas. And actually, you can see my rice and my carbonel olive oil, which I love, which is a Spanish olive oil that I grew up with that you can get here now. But that's that's the book. All right, is, I'm going to try. It wasn't as hard as I, as I thought it would be, Ed. It's not. It's, a, it's not like too I, bad. No. And like I said, once you've done it a few times, it's pretty easy. Getting it perfect is hard, but you know if it's not perfect, it's still really good. So, I mean, it's rice, shrimp, and sausage. I don't know how you can go wrong. Exactly. If you start thinking about the ingredients, you got a, a really good stock, and then rice, shrimp, and sausage, or whatever it is that you like. All right, I'm gonna plate some up for me so people can see how successful I was. And because I'm hungry, I haven't had lunch, so I'm looking forward to this. Let's see how this is. It looks amazing. Oh yeah, I got, let's see if I can show you. All right. So, see the little brown toasted rice at the bottom. I don't know if you can see that. Yes. Mm -hmm. yes. That's what you're trying to get. You're trying to get it, you know, uh, you know, I got a little bit burnt, but not very much. You're trying to get it that, and that will be kind of crunchy. And that's the, the goal is to get that little toasted rice there, Ooh, yeah. which I'm glad I got because I only get it about one in three. So you guys are lucky. Oh yeah, that came out nice. So yeah, I'm, I'm, you're oh, yeah. seeing my dinner. Yes. And your lunch tomorrow, probably. Uh, and, and yeah, well, I think, uh, I'm pretty sure that my daughter is inviting her friends to have a social distancing picnic tomorrow. Oh, I love it. That's a great idea. So they'll, co you know, they come to the yard and eat paella. Okay, oh, we're, Ed, having, I think we're having success online. We're seeing in the chat. Okay. Great success. I, I'm dying. Look, I'm dying to see pictures. I really want to see the pictures of this and what people made. I think I'm done. Yeah, close the door. All right. Give it a I think I'm done. Go. That looks perfect, man. That looks really good. Yeah, I have a I have a I have a nice protective uh protective layer of rice on the bottom of my cast iron skillet so that the other stuff didn't burn. Yeah. It's got, a, it's got a little bit of liquid in it. So what I'm gonna do is, is I am going to take my other paella pan and put it over the top as you hear crying children. Because <laughs> this I is see, my life. See. Paella I see. Food. I see Marie and Kristen both said it was their first paella. You know, I'm get, we're getting messages from Kurt, but I don't know if he actually made one or not. Yeah, I'm gonna. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. Turn the grill off. And I'm gonna cover this as we are in the darkness. I'm going to cover it. 
with the paella pan. Oh, Chancellor's going to give Kurt Coonrod some of her leftovers tomorrow. Oh, nice. <laughs> Hold on, I'm going to set this down for a second because I'm I'm having a little fire issue. I'll be right back. Oh. oh. Uh oh, no fire issues. All right. I just want to go. say to everybody, Brian. I just wanted to make sure I didn't light my house on fire there. <laughs> hey, listen, the Alumni Association, we do not have liability for that, okay, tonight. <laughs> that was not part of well, the plan. Well, I moved over to my side. I moved over to my the side of my house so, so I would have light. And uh, I'm a little close to the, I realize I'm a little close to the siding, so. <laughs> nice. Okay, Brian, have you, have you tested? Have you tasted it? I think we're good. I it think we're good. It looks really good. We're gonna, we're gonna when, this, when this finishes, so I closed, I covered it up and I closed the grill down. I'm gonna let it sit for about five minutes, open the grill back up, plate this bad boy, get some ice in a glass, have our, uh, whatever you call this drink we just made. Um, Sangria, just go with that. Okay. We'll call it Frangria, Frangria, yeah. family sangria. The family sangria. Yeah, the, it's one. It's you know, like like a lot. I'm sure this is true for a lot of other a lot of other people. But Spanish food, everybody says theirs is authentic, and nobody else's is. So every family is like, oh, you got to make it my way. That's the only real way to make it. And so, but that's the beauty of it, man. It's like soul music. Everybody has a brand. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a brand of it, and that's okay. You know, Memphis, Chicago, Nashville, um, Muscle Shoals, you know, it's not, it, it's not a genre. It's a way of singing, just like paella is just a yep. way of cooking rice. Mm -hmm. You guys don't mind. I'm eating some while I talk because this actually came out good, so I'm happy. Well, I, th I think if there, I'm going to see if there are any more questions. Um, people are just saying thanks, really fun. Love this event. Come here, May May. We'll have to figure uh, out what thank, our next one is. Thank people for watching. I can't think of I, again, I just want to express to you, Ed, like we have people on the line from Virginia and North Carolina and California and Chicago and St. Louis and Central West End. And this is this has been a really fun evening. Who is this, Brian? This is Mahalia. Hi. You say hi. You say hi. I'm no. a Haleo. <laughs> she's gonna eat paella, you take her. But she's gonna eat paella probably. That's great. Okay, no, this I is think, cool, man. I think that yeah. it's a wrap. Um, we're gonna, everyone right. has been sending uh, Thanks, Brian. This was great, man. It was great to, to do this with you. Oh yeah, let's do it again. Uh, definitely. Let's do it again. Oh, yeah. Okay, so here's some pictures that have come in. I want to show you on the left Whoa, side. Damn, there's some good paellas looking. There is uh, Dr. There. Scott Peterson uh, in the Chancellor's house cooking paella. And that looks awesome, Scott. Thanks for sharing the pic. So post a picture of your paella. You can do it on Facebook. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, you'll see our handles, hashtag UMSL alumni, uh, at UMSL alumni, or if you're not on social media, just send it to us at alumni at umsl.edu. Alumni at umsl.edu. Just send us an email and we'll collect all the photos and we'll send a little photo gallery out. So, um, and I think with that, Ed, we are finished. Brian, are you still there? I am. Thank you, thank you, thank you. This maybe, was fun. You, maybe you could sing us a little tune while we uh, end the event. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. Good night, sweetheart. Well, it's time to go. I hate to leave you, but Paya must go. Good night, sweetheart. Adios. Adios. <laughs> Yeah. Both. Uh, <laughs> Good night, everyone. Bye, everybody.